those who wait for God, they shall not be put to shame. Await the Lord with hope, await the Lord with joy, keep vigil for the coming of the Said are those who believe that God's promise shall come true. Await the Lord with hope, await the Lord with joy, keep vigil for the coming of the reign of God. Good morning and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Petoskey on this fourth Sunday of Advent. I am Pastor Ryan Donahoe and it is my honor to welcome you here to worship on this morning. We gather together as Christ's body from all across the world. And indeed, it is a gift and a blessing that we can gather together to worship God. And as we begin, we begin, as always, with these words. This is a Christian worship service. And because it is a Christian worship service, everyone is welcome here, and our doors are open to all people. So let us worship the Lord. And let us join our hearts and our voices together in our call to worship. By the power of your Spirit, we will walk in the light. In times of joy and gladness, we will walk in the light. In times of sorrow and despair, we will walk in the light called to witness to your love, we will walk in your light. As we anticipate the birth of Jesus Christ, we light candles of hope, love, and peace as reminders of the promise that Emmanuel is our God with us and that God graciously gives us these gifts even if they sometimes come in ways that are mysterious to us. On this fourth Sunday of Advent we light the candle of joy. We fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. The day is coming when there will be everlasting joy to the world, for our Lord will come again. We light this candle of joy in anticipation of that day. Shared until all are fed Longing for 
My friends, during this Advent season, we have been hoping. We have been waiting. Christmas is often a time of parties and excitement and presents and activities. And so Advent reminds us again to be still, to be silent to wait for the Lord. So each week we take time to come to these waters, these waters of new life, these waters of hope, these waters of love and joy. And as we come to these waters, we will pray our prayer of confession. And we will also take time to be still, to be quiet. Let us pray. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, come. Sometimes we have a hard time imagining that you would come down from the glorious splendor of heaven to be born in a Bethlehem stable with straw, mud, and animals all around. We cannot imagine that you willingly took on our broken human flesh with bodies that ache and suffer from illness and pain. You walked into our sadness, into wars, into violence and persecution, and you did this all for us. We confess that it is difficult to comprehend and difficult to believe. Continue to enter in Emmanuel. Enter into our darkness and give us light. Enter into our lives and change them for your good purposes. Enter into our hearts and still them with the words, Be not afraid. Amen. Indeed, the good and glorious news is that Christ has met us here. Christ has broken into this world and stands along with us. So know that you are forgiven. Know that you are loved. And know the joy that only comes from God. And spread that joy wherever you go.
Please pray with me. Astonishing God, send your Holy Spirit upon us as we await the coming of your Son. Fill us with your word that we may proclaim your love here on earth. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and today we are talking about joy. And in the sermon, I will actually talk about all of you and how you bring me so much joy. And I think, as children, you perhaps understand joy better than adults do. You're quicker to laugh and run, giggle and smile. Indeed, you have much to teach us about joy. And I thought that we could use a little more joy during this time. And so I found this Christmas necklace from one of my kids, and I thought it'd be fitting for today just to bring a little bit joy to our time of worship today, because we all can use some joy right now. But the greatest joy is coming soon. From just a few days, it's Christmas, and on that day, we celebrate that Jesus was born in this world. And indeed, that is a joy that can never be taken away from us. So friends, continue to laugh, continue to smile, to tell jokes, and to giggle 
with all your parents and friends because we need it. And you all indeed are teaching us. Let us pray. God of laughter, we thank you for the children in this church and for the children all around the world who bring us so much joy, who remind us to smile, who remind us to laugh. Indeed, God, they are our teachers, and we give you thanks for all of them. Amen. This week we passed a mile marker in our country. There have been over 300,000 deaths from COVID-19. And it actually came to pass that On the day when we passed 300,000 deaths, it was the same day that the vaccine was shipped out to hospitals. In that one day, there was such hope for what was coming, but it also was a day of counting the dead. So much joy and sorrow wrapped up in one day. I've been thinking back to my first year here at this church in 2015. We had six memorial services in three months. Also, that summer was the shooting at Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. And on that Sunday, following that shooting, I stood right in this spot and we read aloud the names of the nine people who were killed. We spoke their names out loud. And at every memorial service we gather together and we speak aloud the names of the person who has died. We remember them. We celebrate them. We give voice to who they were. But how do you speak aloud the names of the 300,000 people who have died in our country because of COVID? How do we give voice to those we have lost? How do we find joy in the midst of such sorrow? Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Many of you know, and if you've seen any of our services here, you, you would know that I have a hard time remembering dates, <laughs> or sometimes even keeping months straight in my head. But this year, in 2020, I have a very good reason. And in our house, we've, uh, we've started to call it covid brain, that there's so much going on that it's hard to remember things and keep track. But I feel like I need to apologize to all of you because it wasn't until watching 
the service alongside all of you on Sunday that I realized I had messed up the order of the Sundays in Advent. In a normal year in Advent, each Sunday has a theme, and the order is hope, love, joy, and peace. However, for some reason this year when I was planning all of this, I ordered them hope, love, peace, and joy. So if you're following along in your devotional or anywhere else, you are correct. Last Sunday should have been the joy Sunday. In fact, that's when we light the pink candle for Godette Sunday, which is rejoice. However, I think that once again the Spirit has been at work here, for I know that I and I'm sure many of us are in need of some joy right now. It's been a long year. And I think we all would agree to that. Who would have thought when we were gathered here last January that we would be gathering in our homes? For worship today. We were all excited about the renovations that were going to start. There was excitement because it was a new decade, and we were all hoping for an amazing and joy-filled 2020. Little did we know what was coming. I feel like Joseph in our text, was in a similar spot. See, Joseph had found his perfect bride. They were going to get married. He was all excited for the life that they would have together. But then he finds out that his bride-to-be was pregnant while they were engaged. And it wasn't his baby. I'm sure that Joseph ran to his parents and friends saying, What am I supposed to do? I thought she loved me. We were going to have an amazing life together. It was going to be perfect. But instead, Joseph was devastated. Everything he had hoped for, everything he had planned was coming to ruin. The sorrow he must have felt would have been immense. And Joseph was a special man. You see, he had every right to just be done with Mary right then and there, but he cared about her, and he didn't want to be rid of her in a way that would draw attention to her pregnancy. So he was trying to figure out a way that he could move on in his life without Mary, but he didn't want to disgrace her as well. And then finally he came up with a plan. But then that night, everything changed again. The angel of the Lord comes to Joseph in his dream and explains what what is happening. And we read that when Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded. There is this shift that happens in Joseph. He goes from this deep, soul-tearing, soul-breaking sorrow to having a glimpse of what might be. It would have been easy for Joseph to have been overcome with his sorrow and grief but he paid 
attention to what God was doing. And he was given a life that he could have never imagined. In the pastor's pen this week, I mentioned a quote from Gary Haugen, who is the CEO of International Justice Mission, and it's an organization that works to rescue people from modern-day slavery. And as you can imagine, it is a soul-wrenching, grief-filled ministry. And anyone would wonder how Gary has been able to do this ministry for 30 years. And the answer that he gave to Kate Bowler when she asked him how he had done it is very fitting for us. Gary said, Joy is the oxygen for doing hard work. Joy is the oxygen for doing hard work. This year it would have been easy to give in to grief and sorrow. It would be understandable to wonder if things would ever get better. And indeed, this week as I was talking with my therapist, I said, there is just so much grief in the world right now. So much grief in our country in our community, in our church right now, there is just so much grief. My therapist responded to me not by giving me any answers, but by asking a question. Ryan? Where do you find joy right now? It was a great question, and it shook me up. For I had been paying attention only to the grief, to the uncertainty of this time, to all the questions and loss and sorrow that I had been missing the joy that was all around me. As I started talking with him, I found my body straightening, my heart growing and my weariness lifting. I began to talk about my children, Moira and Kellen, and the laughter and joy they spread. I talked about all the little ones in this church and how much I miss them and our children's time together when we get all the random questions and answers, and just thinking of them brought a smile to my face as I can feel it doing right now. But rather than focusing on what was missing, those things we couldn't have, I found that those memories, that thinking of all of you, brought me such joy. And it brings me such joy even now as I look around this sanctuary and I picture all of you in your seat. And with the vaccine now, 
being deployed and the renovations coming closer to completion, I see a light, I see the glimmer that we will be able to gather together again to worship God in this place together. And while I don't know exactly when that day will be, I am filled with such immense joy to be thinking of that time. On this day, this Sunday, December 20th, 2020, the day before the longest night of the year, I ask you, where is your joy? What are the sparkles of light in your life? Where is the glitter that can't help but bring a smile to your face? For yes, it is the longest night. And the darkness feels even more dark this year, but the sun and the sun are coming. The light is breaking forth. Joy will come in the morning. Will you meet that light with sorrow or with a joy that no one has ever known? My dear friend, May you be filled with hope and love and peace and abounding joy in this Advent season. And get ready. The light, it's coming. Amen and amen. Gracious and loving God, God of laughter, God of joy, we give you thanks for your Son, the light that has broken into this world and pushes the night away. Fill us with your joy, with a joy that only comes from you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Just
Let us join our voices together with all those who celebrate God's goodness and sing of God's blessings. Let us pray. Eternal God, we pray for the world that our warring ways may be overturned. Even now, through the death, birth, and resurrection of Christ, for nothing is impossible with you. We pray for the mission of your church, that we may proclaim the good news of the age as we rejoice in the gift of our Savior. We pray also for all those who suffer, for Jenny and Ian, Betty and Lee, Rob, Pastor Sherry, Emily and Skip, Phil and Barb, Eli's grandmother, for Bruce and Tom and Maya, that we may feed the hungry and lift the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. We pray for your creation, that we may safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. We remember before you those who have died for Greg and Tony and Nancy and Bob. And we pray for those who will die today that they may rest with you eternally in your kingdom where there is no end. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we magnify you, almighty God, forever and ever. And we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God, the source of all good things, has given us what we need. In joyful response, let us offer our gifts, the fruit of our labors, and the dedication of our hearts to loving service in the name of Christ. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, O God, maker of heaven and earth, giver of justice, lover of righteousness, hope of the afflicted and friend of the poor. Your faithfulness never fails. Take and use these gifts we offer to further your purpose in the world and to fulfill the promise of the world to come. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
A few announcements I'd like to draw to your attention. First, tomorrow, Monday, December 21st at 7 p.m., we are having a community-wide service online on our uh, YouTube page, um, and that will be bringing people together from seven faith organizations in our community to come together for a service of hope and healing on this longest night. So that is tomorrow, December 21st at 7 p.m. on our YouTube channel. Also, Christmas Eve, we are providing two options on that evening at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Those who are hardy can show up and we will be gathered in our north parking lot for a brief Christmas Eve service. We do ask if you attend that, that you wear a mask and stay physically separate. Um, we will also be live streaming that to our Facebook page starting right at 7 p.m. So you are more than welcome to stay at home where it's warm and gather together with us for that worship service. Also at that Christmas Eve service, if you would like, we are taking donations of over-the-counter medicine to go to Cuba. Um, we haven't been able to get to Cuba for over a year, but it looks like in January that I may be able to go with a couple doctors from the Holland area, and we're looking to take as much medication and any funds with us for that, so we will have a big box at our Christmas Eve service, or you can also drop that by the Donahoe household. And finally, we are asking if you would like to take a picture of your Christmas morning celebration, whether that's around a breakfast table or by a tree or even out walking along our beautiful bay here and send that to Tisha in the office. We will be using those in our early January worship services as a way for us to connect together. Indeed, my friends, this season, this year, has been one of darkness and sorrow and grief. But we know that joy comes in the morning, that the light is on its way. And until that great and glorious day when we celebrate Christ's return you know what to do. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. 
support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you.